Good morning. I'd like to introduce Reverend Sandy, Sandy Vanek. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining Unity of Michiana today via our live stream service on Facebook. We're a diverse and inclusive spiritual community offering a positive path to spiritual living. Our vision is a world transformed by spiritually centered people awakened to the oneness of all. And we'd like to uh, just ask you to invite your friends and your family to join with us today or later on on Facebook. Right now I will be like or Christ candle in acknowledgement of that light of higher consciousness resident within us all that is that living presence of God let us pray oh as we breathe into this moment We focus our thoughts on the center of our being. And then we let that centered connection reach out. Reach out into the ethers, as Charles Fillmore would say. Reach out into the unified consciousness of one spirit, of which we are all a part. And as we gather here today, we just open our hearts, our very being, to the inflow of infinite spirit of that living presence that renews us and lifts us up, that joins us together and celebrates with us in life and love and grace. And so it is. Amen. And now our wonderful musician for today, our music director, Melanie Gabris Miller, will uh, be sharing some wonderful, uplifting music with you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's so great to see everyone engaging. I know a lot of people are watching and commenting, and we encourage that. Um, I got to watch the live stream from last Sunday, and it was neat to see so many faces. So even though um, I'm just doing this here in this space, and it sounds like I'm by myself. I can very much hear you singing from home. Um, our first song is going to be a Lauren Lane Powell song, and this is a song she wrote during her journey, and it's called This Is What I Know. Please join us singing from home. I see me as God sees me, perfect, whole, complete, illumined and expanded. I am God's hand and feet. I recreate me every day. There's always room to grow, balanced health in every way. This is what I know. This is what I know.
going to do one more opening song. So hopefully everyone's voices are warmed up at home. You've got your cup of coffee and you're sitting at your screen or perhaps your phone. Maybe you've got a pet there or some family members. Um, so just have fun with this. Our next song is a Kieran Drucker song. This is called Healed, Whole, and Healthy. Well, goodness gracious, ain't technology grand. <laughs> it's so fun to be present with you, to know friends and family across the United States are joining in with us today through uh, this wonderful opportunity of live streaming. It's, it's our second service, and, and so we're um, just really feeling into this new experience, stepping outside of the box of what we're used to, and and are so gracious to have you be here with us and part of this. I want to do a little shout out. I've got relatives that are watching, my sister and her husband, in, uh, Vicki and Evan Thompson in California, uh, my BFF from high school, uh, Linda, and uh, people who are watching from Wyoming, Isabel Dearheart, friends from my Unity Church that I used to be a part of in uh, the South Bay area in Torrance, Hello, welcome, it's great to have you. People in Chicago, people in Michigan and Illinois, it, it, it's just wonderful that we can all join together in this experience. So thanks for being here and being a part of touching in in ways that are different. In Unity, we have a publication that has been a part of sharing a word of prayer, a word of inspiration. The publication has been in existence for quite some time. Many of you have that and use it as a daily inspirational. It is our daily word, and I will read that message for today. The word for today is inner peace. I find the peace of God in the silence within me. The Hebrew scriptures tell the story of the word of the Lord commanding the prophet Elijah to stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. As he waits, Elijah fails to find God as he endures a strong a wind strong enough to split mountains, an earthquake, and, and then a fire. Then Elijah discovers God in a sound of sheer silence. Sometimes chaos surrounds me as I try to find the peace of God. Other times the chaos may be inside me. I persist in my efforts as I confront inner storms, fires, and earthquakes as I search for peace. Like Elijah, I remain steadfast in faith, undisturbed by what is happening around me. I wait for distractions to pass. Peace is mine. And from Scripture, 1 Kings 19.12, it says, And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a sound 
of sheer silence. Our word for today is inner peace. Our statement is, I find the peace of God in the silence within me. And now as I hold our prayer box, I invite you to join with me in a continued journey of touching into the inner depths of a communion and a oneness with that which we call universal spirit, holy divine being, beloved mother, father, God. Uh, so wherever you are right now in your place of comfort, relax and breathe. And let go of the busyness of the thoughts of the outer human mind in order to just be present in this now moment. And as I play our singing bowl, which is the tone of the heart chakra vibration, I invite you to let that move through your being to open your heart center, your soul beingness into this moment of inner connection. And as we relax into that recognition that we are all a part of the universal flow of energy, we recognize we are connected in the oneness. Knowing that we are each individual and unique Yet we bring that forth into the tapestry of this universe to express the gifts that we are and to know that beyond time and space we are all connected in the continuum of infinite presence. So I invite you to continue breathing and relaxing in this moment and opening fully to the inflow of pure light, of radiant love, of the healing goodness of the mind heart that is God, universal spirit infinite presence. As we relax, it enables us to be more receptive to this amazing flow of the spirit that reminds us of the truth of our being beyond just our physical bodies and outer physical appearances. We are infinite in nature, created in and through the likeness of the living God. And as such, right here and right now, we can reaffirm every part of our being, mind, body, and spirit is irradiated with 
grace-filled light and love. We forgive, we release, we let go any thoughts that would separate us from experiencing and knowing this as true. And as we feel every cell, every part of our being responding to this deeper inner awareness, we are lifted up and healed. We are inspired and blessed. And we take a moment now to simply rest in the silence of infinite presence, communion with the oneness that is Godness. And having rested, having been renewed in this time of silence, allowing our inner ears to experience the still small voice of God, the flow of infinite wisdom and peace and beauty to inspire and fill us. We rest in a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving, knowing that this is the truth and that we are united beyond time and space in all that is of goodness, inspiration, and life. And so we take a moment now to surround our prayer box in the light and the prayer requests that have been placed within it. We take this moment, each of us, wherever we are, to speak aloud the names, places, people that we would especially bless at this time in prayer. Mary Daly. Anne, Vicki and Evan, Isabel, all of our medical personnel and workers who so diligently stand forth to heal and bless our world leaders, Unity of Michiana, our community, our world. And so together we do indeed give thanks knowing that the activity of spirit, having been called forth by the power of the spoken word and the heartfelt intention, is already manifesting outwardly into divine outcome. For that we say thank you, God. And so it is. So we let it be. Amen.
Sandy, that was a lovely meditation. We really appreciate it. Um, you see two of us here, but there are actually four of us, two people helping behind the scenes, and we love and appreciate their service this morning. And you, I'm sure you know that's, uh, that's Kevin and Susan, and I know Sandy will mention them later. Um, I had the pleasure this week and the honor of um, getting to know a musician who has written some of the music we've done. Um, you know our closing song that we often do is Peace on Earth. Um, the original songwriter of that is Louie Collins. And I was in touch with her, I believe Thursday, and she told me about another song that she wrote one time called Blessed. And um, she shared a little bit about that. She wrote it at a very hard time of her life. And she found herself kind of journaling. And it turned into this song. And when I heard it, I knew that it needed to be part of us here at Unity. So um, I feel a little nervous because she may be watching. If you are, Louis, we appreciate you being out there. And uh, we look forward to doing it here at Unity with um, everyone in the seats. But for now, here's the first introduction to Louis Collins' song, Blessed.
Oh, Melanie, thank you so much. Oh, my heart is always infilled and uplifted and as beautiful music is shared, and I'm so grateful for all that you bring, Melanie, and sharing with us. And I know you're experiencing that out there wherever you are and in your bunny slippers or in, in your comfy jammies or sitting having a cup of coffee. How wonderful that we can be gathered here today. And friends, as, as we all are facing an absolutely unprecedented time, it takes us into a human experience that is very unfamiliar. It feels pretty uncomfortable, especially when we don't have a sense of and we don't feel that we have a control over and so it is an invitation to us all to look differently, to connect with each other in ways that, that are different than we have before, to connect with spirit, to, to learn to be in a new way. And, and as we all are navigating this time that is, oh my goodness, calling us um, into this experience that we have not had before, I felt it was very important to focus on an understanding that we let God's infinite presence outshine fear. That fear itself is far more contagious than any virus can be. And this is a time where we begin to be invited to strengthen our own inner spiritual muscles in turning instead to that presence of God that outshines and that calls us to be whole and well and healthy. So I started uh, this series last week, part one uh, was last week, and this week is part two, uh, letting prayer practices for health, uh, uh, prayer practices for health and wholeness. So we want to really trust in God's infinite presence that outshines fear and utilizing prayer practices for our health and wholeness and for the health and wholeness of our world at this time. So when we talk about prayer, depending on how we grew up, what our spiritual or religious background is, that word can have many concepts or connotations. And it's always really good to stop for a moment and consider what is prayer? What does it mean to me? What is prayer today versus how we might have prayed in the past? I love this beautiful scripture from Psalm 25, 1 through 2a. It says, to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. My God, in you I trust. And Psalm 46, 10 goes on to say, Be still and know that I am God. And so, friends, <clears throat> in unity, when we think about prayer, we think about a union and a connection with infinite spirit within. We recognize that God is not some grand person up in the sky, but rather the essence of all creation that has been and will be and is the flow of that infinite energy of our universe. And prayer is about our willingness in different ways to touch into that energy, to be a part of it, to resonate with it, to be in the stillness, to be in the joyful expression of it. Donna Wilk Cardillo, she was uh, an author and a keynote speaker, and she says, prayer is communication with the divine. It can be whispered or chanted or written or expressed in the work you do. It's important to recognize and to remember that prayer does not have to just stop us in our tracks, that prayer can be an infinite living part of all that we are each moment of every day. And Joseph Frank Bianco, Frank Bianco, goes on to say, 
He was a U.S. circuit judge and an author. He says, if you begin to live life looking for the God that is all around you, every moment, friends, every moment becomes a prayer. And in these times, as, as we are exploring how to be, how to be different, how to be aware, how to be safe and whole and healthy, it's wonderful to take a look at prayer differently. It's wonderful to begin inviting ourselves into the experience and the exercising of our spiritual faith, trust, and prayer muscles. Our, our founder, one of our founders, Charles Fillmore, says, In Jesus Christ heals. We must begin by knowing that God is spirit. Spirit is not located in a big man called God, but is everywhere the breath of life. Over all and through all and in all. We know this from scripture. The highest form of prayer is to open our minds and quietly realize that the one omnipresent intelligence knows our thoughts and instantly answers even before we have audibly expressed our desires. Ooh, as I read that and breathed into that, it was so uplifting for me to remember, to shift out of the things that are on TV, the stuff that is shared around, the the concerns, the, the thoughts that sort of ping pong that draw us into this outer world of circumstances, it reminded me to shift instead, oh, and to relax into spirit, to relax into spirit, and to know that I can do that anytime, any place, all the time. Reminds me of, of a song that a dear friend of mine wrote a long time ago, promised not to sing it, but the words were, all my thoughts are prayer. All my thoughts are prayer. With every, uh, Melanie, tell me, every thought I think, with every move I make, all my, everything is a prayer. So I'm sorry, I couldn't remember all the words. But oh my goodness, that has stayed with me, though, in recognizing that, that prayer isn't just when I stop for a moment. Prayer is the infinite expression of my being as I walk mindfully in my life. And friends, right now, as we face unprecedented times, as we face the challenges in our lives that can draw us into a space of fear, we are human and, and it's only natural. And, and so what is ours to do, what we can do, is to take time apart differently and to be more mindful of our thinking, our thoughts, and where our focus is centered. And to recognize that more than ever, this is a time where prayer is so very important in whatever way that we pray. And we can know in this time of Lent, in this time of Lent, in an understanding that Jesus took 40 days apart in the wilderness. Now, we know, biblically, that 40 represents a given time. It doesn't actually mean 40 days, necessarily, or 40 minutes, or 40 months. It, 40 represented however long it took. And Jesus took time away in the wilderness so that he could step aside from the outer appearances of the humanness and enter into a communion, into a oneness with the living presence that we call God or infinite spirit. So in this time when we are challenged, when we can look outside and, and see things that might create a sense of fear in us, we know that health and wholeness right now depends on shifting shifting within our consciousness into the center of our being, into pure source, tapping into that, relaxing into it, letting it guide us and lead us, letting us renew us in mind and spirit. 
Charles Fillmore, in another of his books, in Atom Smashing Power of Mind, says, true prayer brings about an exalted radiation of energy. Wow, an exalted radiation of energy. And when it is accompanied by faith and love, the word of truth bursts forth in a stream of light that when held in mind, illuminates and uplifts. Oh my goodness, friends. In this time of Lent, in this time of fasting from negativity, in this time of being invited into a new relationship with the God presence of our being, with our higher consciousness, with divine pure spirit, we can relax into prayer and know that it brings about an exalted radiation of energy. Wow. We breathe into that. We recognize it. We experience it right here and right now and know that the importance of prayer in this time is that as we do so, the word of truth bursts forth in a stream of light that when held in mind illuminates and uplifts, friends. It heals and blesses not only us from within, oh, but it goes forth in a mighty river of light and grace and goodness to uplift and bless people around the world right now who are so in need of a recognition of that greatness that lies within them and that loving presence and power that is always there. In scripture from Jeremiah 29, 12, it says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. It reminds us that we are heard, that we are felt, that we are experienced as we center in prayer. And Colossians 4, verse 2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it, with an attitude of thanksgiving. So friends, as we engage right now in prayer practices for health and wholeness, we can begin to recognize and know that our world is changing and how we experience prayer is changing and that we all, all are creative and infinite and we have so many wonderful opportunities to to practice in ways that will build that spiritual muscle within us that will keep us centered in that radiant truth and life. Prayer in any form connects us to infinite spirit and greater good. Prayer in any form connects us to infinite spirit and greater good. In an acknowledgement of all the many ways that we pray, and I'm going to share a few practices with you shortly, I do want to share this verse from Ephesians 6.18. In Scripture it says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, and all kinds of prayers, and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying. And it goes on in Isaiah 65, 24. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. And that reminds us that living presence of universal spirit that lives and breathes and moves and in and through and as all of us is ever present. And that as we bring forth from the center of our being those intentions and those prayer-filled, focused thoughts, that they're already being manifested in outward form through our own intention and our willingness to hold that dynamic space and energy. Author and lay minister S.D. Gordon said, the great people of the earth today are the people who pray. I do not mean those who talk about prayer, nor those who say they believe in prayer, nor yet those who can explain about prayer. But I mean those people who take the time to pray. So friends, what does it mean to take time to pray? 
Does it mean we have to stop everything else we're doing? Or do we begin to understand that we can incorporate prayer into everything we do? So I'm going to share a few prayer practices that you might want to uh, explore for yourself, doing something a little different, a little new. I'd love it if any of you have a special prayer practice you enjoy and participate in. Pop it into those comments on Facebook and, and let us see so that we can all share in these ideas and recognize that we are of that one mind of universal spirit. So mindful awareness, mindful awareness. It's a willingness to be present in this moment with whatever we're doing. Whatever we're doing. And, and not, not allowing or not focusing on our mind that loves to run forward and create stories and the what ifs and oh my gosh, this might happen. And that mindfulness brings us present. Now, I am sure that there are a few of you who have washed your hands once or twice in the last few days, few weeks. Yes. What a wonderful time in that 20 seconds of appreciating our hands and washing them mindfully. And in that moment to send forth a thought of gratitude, a thought of appreciation for those people who are out there supporting and healing and blessing. Mindful awareness keeps us centered in the truth of our being and into the living flow and the presence of the mind, the heart, the beingness of God. Okay, and how many of you love to dance, love to sing, love to move? Obviously, you can tell I always stand very still. My congregation knows, and those of you who are joining us, I move up and down the aisle as I speak. I love to dance. It's been a part of my life. Just movement. What a wonderful way to celebrate the presence of God within us as we sing a joyful song, as we dance and move around as we take a moment to recognize that that is the flow of the presence of God within us. We indeed are dancing a prayer. So how about if you're out walking? Many of you have recognized a whole new sport, right? Where we can go out and walk and power walk and maybe three or four times a day or maybe once or as we do so, we, we pass people. What a great time to wave, to smile. That's a prayer in itself, to share that light with someone else, to, to reach out uh, and touch in a way that oftentimes we have been too busy to do. Okay, here's another one I'll invite you into. Many of you are on Facebook right now. Throughout the next few weeks, as you are on Facebook, Set a timer on your watch for every hour or every five hours and let it be an alarm that reminds you to go to Facebook and, and, and post on there for three minutes, I'm praying for, and put whatever you're praying for, and then say, who will you pray for? And post that. And then begin to notice who responds and who they are praying for, and then include them for the next three minutes in your prayers, in your prayers. There's a process called centering prayer. And it invites us to utilize a phrase or a word as a repetitive mantra as we breathe to go into the stillness, into the silence within. And it allows us to keep focused on that word, which might be oneness, or loving grace, or peace, or wholeness, or health. And as we center on that, and as we breathe into that, it allows us to move into a different experience, a different energetic place of being. And it's a wonderful way to pray. So here's what I'll invite you to do, maybe with your kids. Create a gratitude jar. You're home now and maybe arts and crafts. Take an empty glass jar. You may want to wash out what was ever in it before, but take an empty clean glass jar. And maybe with arts and crafts, you want to paste some pictures on it or write some words and put that on a gratitude jar and create some slips of paper by that. 
And every time that something comes to mind that you're grateful for, put that slip of paper in. And then at the end of the day, when the kids have put in their, their thoughts on gratitude, when you've put your thoughts in, sit down for a moment with them and read, read those slips of gratitude and let your being feel immersed in that infinite sense of health and healing and wholeness that comes from the highest resonance of energetic being, which is an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of thanksgiving. And last but not least, many of you have now been connecting on Zoom, on FaceTime, on WhatsApp, on so many different technical, technological applications that allow us to see each other, to hear each other, to be present with each other. Ask a friend to join you in a call and sit together in prayer, remembering that where two or more are gathered, there I am. There I am. So friends, as as we navigate this whole new journey of being human in unprecedented times, we can recognize that we are so much more than human. We are infinite spirit in expression. And what a wonderful opportunity to practice prayer in ways that help to uplift our mental state of mind, that help us to be centered in a place of positive awareness, to utilize affirmations and wholeness as a mantra that we send out into the world to bless others. Because, friends, we are no longer separate countries. We are now part of a greater awareness of the wholeness that we all are in this process together. Let us share that light of love. Let us share that light of prayer. Let us beam it forth to uplift and touch the hearts, not only of ourselves, but of those around us. And so in closing, I would like to share with you a quote from Max Lucado. Many of you know him as a Christian author. We are always in the presence of God. There's never a non-sacred moment. His presence never diminishes. Our awareness of his presence may falter, but the reality of his presence never changes. Let us engage in prayer in so many different ways types and ways and forms. Let us play with it. Let us enjoy it. Let us engage with others. Let us be a light in this world. And let's let that light shine forth. Thank you very much, Reverend Sandy. We really appreciate your words today. And it was really neat to see people on Facebook engaging with their comments. And I love how Donna said that she likes to find or express gratitude at red lights. Um, it brings her peace during a forced pause in traffic. And then I thought, well, we're not driving in traffic too much these days if we're hunkered down at home. And then Sue Ellen said, instead of singing happy birthday while we're washing our hands, we can affirm the prayer for protection which uh, we'll hear a little bit later. And it's so neat to see everyone greeting each other just as if they were here greeting each other. And if this is your first time tuning in to our unity or any unity, we welcome you. And uh, we would love to see you here in our chairs when we're able to do that again. So I'm going to ask Reverend Sandy to come back. She has a few announcements. We do want to let you know that Susan and I are maintaining office hours here through the week. I'm sorry, Susan, I jumped um, I jumped one. You can leave that one up, though. That's fine. We'll pull the other one up in a minute. But it, it's all interrelated that, that we do have office hours here. And we are working. We are, we are being smart and, and mindful and, and, and wise in, in our being here in this location. And, and yet it's something that Susan and I have both felt strongly about 
holding the presence and the light here in this, our precious sacred space. So we do continue to work here. She's available by phone here on the church office phone. I'm available also, as most of you know, my cell phone is with me most of the time. I appreciate a little bit of space to breathe at moments, yet also please know that any time that you want a word of encouragement, uh, you just want to reach out, you, you have a concern, something you'd like to share, you'd like to be held in prayer, please know that you can reach me by cell phone at any time. We also want to let you know that the Falling Into Ease uh, book class study that we were doing, we're trying to get that up and running on uh, a Zoom call so that we can see each other's faces and, and, and read the book as we go along together. Uh, we have sent out the link so that you can download Zoom to your iPad, your iPhone, your tablet, um, your computer, and then join in. We will send out an email on Wednesday with the link that you click that will just take you then directly into that Zoom meeting. So that will be this uh, Wednesday at 6.30 until approximately 7.38-ish. And we'll be uh, re looking over the chapters 7 through 9. So if you have the book, great. If not, that's okay because we'll all be sharing and exchanging. You all would know by now that the woman's retreat has been postponed, but it will definitely be rescheduled at a later date. And it's going to be a lot of fun, and we are looking forward to that. And so I think that that concludes uh, our happenings and events. And, and so this is the time when we are so very grateful. We're so very grateful to be supported through your donations, through your love offerings that allow us to continue to operate, to be present, to be able to get out the message, the light, to shine forth. And here at Unity, since you're not sitting out here in the seats and you're not tossing dollar bills at me or big checks or anything, what we do know is that Thank goodness for technology, because we have so many ways that we can still contribute and be a part of recognizing the gratitude in our hearts and sharing that forth, knowing this wonderful cycle of giving and receiving is a natural part of life. So I invite you to donate if you care to do so. You can do that by uh, our website, as you can see on the sign that is posted on uh, the video camera, our, our website. Uh, www.unitymichiana.org or those of you who love to go on your phone it's real easy to open up your, your texting and text the number 77977 and then in the message box you put in UOMSC stands for Unity of Michiana Spiritual Center and, and it, then click and it will take you uh, to a wonderfully easy way to donate if you care to do so and I also know at this time that we give in many more ways, that, that abundance is universal, and that your prayers are a part of giving and supporting this wonderful message, this wonderful spiritual center. So I'd ask you to hold that intention in your heart. Hold your phone if you're, if you're giving on your phone. Hold, hold your computer if you're on the website. And take this moment to recognize we are all in this together. We are all part of infinite source that is God. And we're participating in the flow. And so join with me now as we affirm our love offering affirmation. With a grateful heart, I celebrate God's abundance as I give freely and receive with joy. We're going to leave that information up for just a few moments. And if you, aren't, if you don't have a pen handy but you want to keep that information, feel free to do a screenshot or take a picture. Or if you have it up on your computer, you can take a picture. And uh, we, we very much appreciate your gifts.
And so let us take a moment in prayer to bless these love offerings that have been given in that recognition that God is truly our source, that the flow of this universal energy of which we are all a part is our source of abundance and of good. And we give thanks to be a part of the flow of that process to engage and to celebrate an awareness that we are abundantly blessed and gifted, each and every one of us. And as we give, that gift becomes multiplied and returns to us overflowing. And so we say, thank you, God, in your name. Amen. And now as we close, we will be singing uh, one of our peace songs that we use. And as Melanie had shared, uh, Louis gave us permission to uh, live stream this. She is so glad to, to be sharing that with us. And most of you uh, know the song. Please join in as we sing this wherever we are. And thank you, Louis. I know you're watching, and we really appreciate your presence with us today and for sharing your gifts of music with the world. Oh, the sun and the wind and rain bring everything we need. Father, sky above, Mother, earth beneath. Peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth, peace on earth. Where sisters and brothers are. For those of you who have participated in Unity Services, you are aware of James Dillett Freeman's, our, our Poet Laureate, The Prayer for Protection. Uh, we will put that up on, on the screen so that the PowerPoint screen so that you can join with us in that prayer as we pray this forth together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so it is, and so we let it be. Prayer in any form connects us to infinite spirit and greater good. Let's go forward in that place of prayerful awareness. Bye. Love you.